Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and I'm back with another episode of Spoiler Sundays. So this is the time of the week where I take a look at all of the new news and spoilers that, that we got for the Digimon trading card game from Japan, and, well, talk about them. So uh, we are uh, going to be wrapping up uh, the spoilers for the Beelzemon starter deck, and we're also going to be starting with uh, some BT12 spoilers, now that BT12 is just on the horizon for Japan. Getting into the spoilers, starting off uh, with finishing up the Beelzemon deck, we have a new version of Candlemon. So this new version of Candlemon is back to being a purple level 3 Digimon, and he has the on play ability of trashing the top two cards of our deck, with the on delete ability of if you have uh, at least uh, 10 or more cards in your trash, then you get to draw one card. So he's a pretty decent card at just acting as a solid engine, rewarding us up for having that specific trash count while helping fill up our trash to get it in that state, but I think in the context of just a Beelzemon deck, I think that the Beelzemon deck's rookie lineup is just going to be all Intmons, so I don't necessarily think it's going to be played inside of that deck, but it seems like it's going to be a pretty good engine tool for a lot of other mill-based strategies. Next, uh, we have Pascomon. So Pascomon is another purple level 3 Digimon with the blocker ability and he can't attack players, but he could still attack Digimon if we really wanted him to, but he's just in here to act as a really good rookie blocker, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing for how Purple wants to play, because Purple usually wants to try to reuse its cards and parts and pieces as much and as often as it possibly can, and having a low-level blocker just is pretty good at being an easy target to want to pull to always have a consistent way of having some solid defense. Next up, we have Warning Shots. So Warning Shots is going to be a new 7-costed purple option, so that way Beale Starmon can take advantage of it. But it seems like it's just a pretty decent option in general, being a very unique option. So it has the ability where when this card is trashed from our deck, we get to place it into the battle area, so that way we could then utilize its uh, secondary uh, main ability of delay to be able to return one purple Digimon or purple Tamer from our trash to our hand. So this is just a pretty decent card at wanting to be milled for some uh, good recursion. And then on top of that, uh, it has a uh, main ability that actually won't set it into the battle area. It has to be specifically milled in order to line up uh, that delay ability, but its main ability is just acting as it some solid removal with it being able to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with the highest level and the security ability basically activating that main where we get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with the highest level. So this is a new take on how we could line up and set up our delay abilities, which makes it pretty good, but this is just a really good generic purple removal option for virtually any purple deck. And then the last card that we got for the Beelzemon starter deck is going to be Beel Starmon. So Beel Starmon is a really decent card playing very similarly to how the old one wants to play, where she's going to be reducing her play cost, uh, except this time she's going to be reducing her play cost by 4 for every 10 cards in our trash. So it's going to be a little bit harder to make her free, but usually having 20 cards in your trash means that she's going to be 5 to hard play, and hard playing a uh, level 6 Digimon for 5 is still pretty decent. And then she has a nice ability where during both players' turns, once per turn, when a card is trashed from our deck, we get to place one Impmon from our trash uh, onto the battlefield for free, and then that Digimon gains the rush effect for the turn. So this is a very powerful while she's just sitting passively on the field, just because we have so many ways of milling cards ourselves during not only just our turn, but the opponent's turn as well, to be able to have a field of Itmons to then take advantage of to warp into our Beelzemons, which is what's making that Itmon rookie lineup a more desired lineup for how the deck wants to play, and this is still just a pretty decent supporting card to include inside of the deck. And then her secondary ability states that during the opponent's turn, when an opponent's Digimon attacks, we get to trash the top card of our deck, so that way we have an alternative way to be able to uh, self-mill ourselves to help fill up our trash during the opponent's turn, and then this will also feed into her first ability to be able to spawn an Intmon. 
And then uh, we do have uh, some new news uh, when it comes to uh, BT12. Well, it's not really new news. We just got what the pack image is going to be looking like. So just as a reminder, BT12 for Japan is going to be released on November 25th, assuming no delays happen because the Beelzemon starter deck actually did get a delay for Japan. But regardless, as far as what the set breakdown is going to be doing, it just looks like your average set with uh, normal ratios and 20 different uh, alternate art cards uh, that you could possibly pull from. But as far as uh, some of the spoilers uh, that we got for the set, we have a decent chunk of them to go over, so let's just start off with some of the more exciting ones in the form of a Chaos Dramon X Antibody. So Chaos Dramon X Antibody is going to be one of the SRs in the set, and this card absolutely looks insane for how the uh, Machine Dramon deck wants to play, and that deck just keeps getting better and better with each passing set because it just keeps getting support for some reason. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's just something uh, funny that I know noticed is that it's always getting some support. So what this uh, card is doing is uh, it's a uh, red and black level 6 kit Digivolve for 5 off of either red or black level 5s, and then it has 13,000 DP with a play cost of 13. So he's stat-wise on the larger side, and then on top of that he has a nice uh, alternative Digivolution condition where you could Digivolve him for 2 on top of a Machine Dramon or a Chaos Dramon, having access to evolve him in various different ways. And then he has three abilities. The first one is at the start of our main phase, we get to place one Digimon card with Cyborg or Machine from our trash uh, to the bottom of this Digimon's Digivolution source. So uh, Machine Dramon just wants to have a whole bunch of sources and a whole bunch of different sources to be able to uh, line up a whole bunch of different abilities to toolbox uh, our Mega to be as strong as he possibly can be. And this ability just feeds into that, having recursive ways at being able to add sources. And then on top of that, his secondary ability states that during all turns, this Digimon gains the effect of Machine Dramon and Chaos Dramon in this Digimon's Digivolution source. So uh, the uh, Machine Dramons and Chaos Dramons already have lots of really strong abilities built into themselves, namely their protection abilities, so it's just uh, allowing our Chaos Dramon X Antibody to have access at those protection abilities. And his third ability feeds into the second and the first, where during all turns, once per turn, when this Digimon would be deleted, we get to trash the top card of the opponent's security. So with all of those built-in protections that are basically preventing him from being deleted, we could try to uh, use those abilities in combination with this ability to keep the Digimon around and on top of that, uh, burn the opponent's security at the same time and be able to have the ability to refill our inheritables for when we're going to be losing them to our uh, Machine Dramon and Chaos Dramon's abilities. So it just seems like a very strong card overall to be a very powerful and menacing threat. And then he comes with an option card in the form of a Super Eradication Attack. So Super Eradication Attack is a 2 cost uh, red and black option, and while you have a level 6 uh, machine uh, Digimon uh, in play, then we get to use this card without meeting its color requirements, making it a little bit easier to play. Then on top of that, it has a nice main ability where we get to choose one Digimon with Machine or Cyborg in its traits, delete that Digimon and one of the opponent's uh, Digimon with DP equal to or less than the chosen Digimon's DP to be able to use it, our Chaos Dramon X Antibody to his utmost potential. Then on top of that, it has a nice security ability where by trashing one card with Cyborg or Machine in his traits uh, from our hand, we get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon whose play cost is equal to or less than uh, the card's play cost, so this way it just uh, is acting as some solid removal when it's coming out of security and helping us fill up our trash uh, with our machines and cyborgs, again feeding into Castromon X Antibody's abilities. Next, we have a new version of Dobermon. So this new version of Dobermon is still going to be a purple level 4. Evo's for 2, hard place for 4, 5,000 DP, nothing special there. But he does actually have an alternative Digivolution cost, which is kind of interesting considering he could Digivolve for 2 on top of any level 3 with the save ability. So that's kind of interesting, the fact that we're having alternative Digivolution costs tied to abilities that the uh, lower level Digimons would have have, and then he has the inheritable ability himself of retaliation, making whatever Digimon that's on top of him going to be a little bit more annoying for the opponents to deal with. 
Next up, uh, we have uh, Jokermon. So uh, this uh, is going to be another blah vanilla card. It has the same stats as Monzimon, but in purple. And I don't necessarily think purple exactly had a Monzimon before, but now they do. Next up, we have a new version of Monimon. So uh, Monimon is a pretty decent card to synergize with Digimon with the save uh, abilities, just because its inheritable ability states that on delete, if this Digimon has save in its uh, abilities, then we get to draw one. So this is actually a pretty decent uh, draw engine Digitama, similar to Demi Marimon, except we don't need to discard anything, and it's just allowing us to synergize with our save based Digimon. Next up, uh, we have Jet Mervamon. So Jet Mervamon is a, a pretty decent card for a low rarity card. So uh, what she's doing is she is a level 6 uh, purple and black Digimon. She has the alternative Digivolution conditions where we could Digivolve her for 5 on top of a level 5 or for 2 on top of a level 6. And then she herself has the Armor Purge ability. And on top of that, she has a on play slash win digivolving ability where we get to place one Digimon card with cross hearts in its traits from our hand or underneath one of our tamers to the bottom of this Digimon's Digivolution source. Then if this Digimon has Sparamon in its Digivolution source, all of your Digimon gain the blocker ability and can't be returned to uh, the hand or deck until the end of the opponent's turn. So this is adding some pretty decent protection to the Cross Hearts deck, incentivizing them to want to use Mervamon even more. And then on top of that, her all turns ability states that uh, once per turn, when another Digimon is deleted, we get to unsuspend this Digimon, ideally so that way she has the blocker ability and will be able to block again. And on top of that, she has the Digicross 3 ability for utilizing Mervamon and Sparrowmon. So if you use both of them to Digicross, then it's going to be reducing the play cost by 6, making her 7 to hard play, which is still pretty expensive, but it just gives us alternative ways to be able to utilize the card. Next up, uh, we have a new version of Ikakimon. So Akakimon is going to be a uh, level 3 yellow Digimon this time with only 1000 DP and he has that similar Digivolution condition where we get a Digivolve for 0 on top of a level 2 with save in its description. And then on top of that, uh, he has the inheritable ability of when attacking once per turn. If this Digimon has save in its description, then uh, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 2000 DP until the end of the turn, acting as some solid removal for whatever is going to be on top of him. Next up, uh, we have Gokumon. So Gokumon is a pretty decent card, especially to be played with the whole Venusmon sub-theme on uh, giving the opponent's uh, Digimon security attack minus and punishing them for having security attack plus. So he's going to be a uh, brand new level 5 for that deck to use. Stats aren't anything too special, but he could Digivolve for 3 on top of a level 4 with save in its description. So it gives us that alternative way to be able to Digivolve up into him. And on top of that, we even have a nice way to be able to hard play him for a reduced cost where when you would play this Digimon from your hand if your opponent has a Digimon with any form of security tech whether it's plus or minus in play then we get to reduce his play cost by three making him a level five that hard plays for three which is absolutely insane considering the speed and tempo that that just brings us to be able to get into a new level six. And then on top of that, he has a nice inheritable ability where when attacking once per turn, one of the opponent's Digimon gains security attack minus one until the end of the opponent's turn, feeding into what Venusmon really enjoys, where she's just going to be punishing the opponent's Digimon and making them as useless as she could possibly make them for having that debuff. And then continuing the trend of uh, abusing and using the fact that the opponent's Digimon has any form of uh, security tech, whether it's a plus or minus, we also have Sagamon. So Sagamon is uh, going to be doing something very similar to what we saw with Gokumon. Play cost is a little bit higher, but he still can be uh, reduced uh, if the opponent has a Digimon with any form of security tech in play by 3, making him a level 5 that's 4 to hard play, which is still pretty cheap and efficient. Then he could Digivolve uh, for 3 on top of uh, any Digimon with save in its description, and he has that same inheritable ability of when attacking once per turn. One of the opponent's Digimon gains security attack minus one until the end of the opponent's turn, making him another really good card for that Venusmon style of deck to want to adopt. 
Next up, we have Kozenimon. So Kozenimon is going to be the black Digitama of the set, acting as another good draw engine Digitama. Next up, we have Zenimon. So Zenimon is, for the most part, just going to be your stereotypical uh, rookie vanilla, where it has the stat line of uh, 2 to hard play, 0 to evo, 3000 DP, making him a pretty efficient rookie to use. And he has an alternative Digivolution cost, where we get a Digivolve him for 0 on top of a level 2 with save in its description, making him even easier to use than a lot of those other rookies before. Next up, we have Ganemon. So Ganemon is going to be a pretty basic level 4, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be effective in his own right. So stat-wise, he's not doing anything too special. He has the alternative Digivolution condition that we've been seeing on a lot of these new cards, where he could Digivolve for 2 on top of any level 3 with save in its description. And then he has the inheritable ability of Reboot, so that way whatever Digimon is going to be on top of him will be able to have that ability, and Reboot is actually a pretty decent ability to be playing around with. And then the last card that we got spoiled this week is going to be Footmon. So Footmon is actually going to be a blah vanilla card, except he's going to be a pretty decent one considering he is a level 5 black cyborg, even though we'd prefer our black cyborgs to have an ability. The fact that the typing still matters, considering we have lots of different abilities that care about cyborgs, makes him still pretty decent, on top of the fact that he evos for 2 and has 9000 DP, which is pretty efficient for a level 5 to digivolve up into and black doesn't have a whole lot of those and now that black actually has another one and it has 9000 dp actually makes him a pretty solid card to use just for the raw tempo and potential cyborg synergies but uh, that's all we got as far as spoilers uh, this week i don't exactly know what save in its description is going to mean yet considering the translations uh, are a little bit unclear when it comes to that. I don't know if it needs the save ability itself or if it's just having the save ability in its stack. We'll eventually find out and learn uh, what that's supposed to mean, especially since a lot of Digimon have that alternative Digivolution cost, but I'm excited to see where this set is going to go, considering this is following uh, the anime's uh, Cross Wars Season 3, The Boy Who Leapt Through Time. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zunitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.